Hello folks, this is the Angry Reviewer once again, and today I am bringing you a review on Bloodsport 3 with Daniel Bernhardt as Alex Cardo. Um, Jason O'Connor, since you've been like one of my loyalist YouTube followers, this one's for you. Uh, let's dive right into this shithole that is Bloodsport 3. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick recap on Bloodsport 2. Bloodsport 2, we follow Daniel Bernhardt's character, Alex Cardo. He breaks into Pat Moriata's house. Rest in peace. Mr. Miyagi, um, and he tries to steal his, because he's a thief, he tries to steal his katana sword, just like in the first Bloodsport where Frank Dukes and his friends break into the house, his friends try to steal his master's sword, uh, Frank stays behind, he's putting the sword back, Gets caught. He's forced to train. And he joins the Kumite and wins. You know how that goes. Well, in this one, Alex, one of his friends, steals the sword. He has to fight to get the sword back. All the while going to prison. And while he's in prison, um, I'll give you the short cliff notes of Bloodsport 2. While he's in prison, he meets a, this martial arts master named Sun. The whole time while he's in prison, um, there's training montages, training montages, training montages. Uh, lame fights, lame fights, lame fights. Then we get to the exciting shit. Where he's going to join the Kumite. What I did breeze through there though is. The whole time he's in prison. He's taking punishment because he's protecting Sun. From this sadistic guard named Demon. This guard goes around and he wants to beat the crap out of Sun. And beat the crap out of Cardo. Because he's supposed to be. We're supposed to suspend belief. And he's supposed to be our main antagonist in the Kumite when we finally get there. Well, before Alex can get into the Kumite, he has to find a way in. Because the Kumite is only by reservation. So what he does, um, he goes to Ray Jackson on the reference of a friend. Tells Ray Jackson, look, uh, my name is Alex Cardo. I'm trying to get into the Kumite. Uh, one of Ray Jackson's students from his roster is disrespecting the Kumite. He doesn't take it seriously. He's a joke. So Ray tells Cardo, if you can beat him, I'll give you his invitation to the Kumite. If he beats you, he stay, He keeps his invitation. So, of course, this guy is supposed to be cocky and full of shit. He, uh... Accepts Ray's offer, gets his ass whooped. Cardo gets his invitation. Cardo ends up in the Kumite. We see Bland fight, Bland fight, Bland fight. A pretty interesting one, Bland fight. Then you see Alex versus the demon. So, right here, and I know I didn't mention this part. While Alex is fighting the demon, we're supposed to believe that while he was training with Sun in prison, his arms became like concrete and his legs became like bamboo. And while he was also in prison, Sun was teaching him the iron palm. Alright, I'll tell you right off the bat. Just so you don't think, well, wow, this shit sounds interesting. Not one time in the Kumite does Cardo use the Iron Palm when he's facing 
demon. Not one time. Granted, remember I just told you, his legs are like bamboo. His arms are supposed to be concrete. So, supposedly, he doesn't need the iron palm. The iron palm was just a technique that he learned. Just like Van Damme learned the dim mock from his master, from his Shifu, Cardo learned the iron palm. But yet, we don't get to see him use the iron palm, whereas we saw Van Damme use Tanaka's dim mock on those bricks at least once so yeah pretty much it's when Cardo I mean jump right into it faces demon he defeats demon with his own martial arts skills because like demon will go for to uh, hit him and uh, he'll block with his arms demon hurts his hand he goes to kick him with his legs. Demon hurts his foot and his leg. All the while, Cardo's getting all these hits on him. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The fight between Demon and Cardo, all bit how short it is, was choreographed very well. But it just wasn't that good because Demon come acro comes across as this character... That will try to mug you while you're going to the grocery store. Or one of these street gang members that they talk tough. They can back it up if they have to. But then in the end you end up whooping their ass. That's Demon. So that should give you more or less what Demon is. Again. Demon wasn't that bad of a character. It was choreographed pretty well. It was just kind of bland. It was just there. Demon's the type of guy you would pull off the street, ask if he wants to do a movie. He would say yes. He does it. You pay him. And then you just forget about him. Demon was just a forgettable demon. You know, Demon was just a forgettable character in this movie. So, pretty much after Cardo defeats Demon in Bloodsport 2, with the help of Ray Jackson, they get Sons Katana Sword, they get Pat Moriata's Katana Sword back. Alex Cardo wins the right to get Son released from prison. And the film ends. So we pick up some years later. Alex Cardo now is posing as an art critic. He's back in the same place. Breaking into Pat Moriata's house. But this time there's a twist. He's working with the cops. To break up this gambling ring. Yeah, don, don, don. While he's in there, we see the same bland, boring fights. Alex get in, gets into a couple of fights with some of Mr. Miyagi's guards. He whoops their ass. Don't get me wrong, the fight scenes for that were very well choreographed. Then we get some boring exposition from our main antagonist, which is this Russian, I guess, or Czechoslovakian gangster who's staging a kumite and would like Alex to join because he heard Alex won the kumite a couple of years ago in Japan. Alex says no. So that pretty much leads to this wannabe gangster, or he is a gangster, I should say. That leads to this gangster uh, setting up the Kumite, but before the Kumite starts, he gets Alex's mentor's son killed. And they do it in like a, ra a rather cheesily way. I mean, I'm going to say this for this movie. 
These films are grade B type actioneers. They're nothing you're going to write home about. They're the type of mindless fluff. You check your brain at the door. You kick it out of your head. And you watch. This is the type of stuff we would have seen in the 90s. Late at night on USA. Or on TNT. Or when cable was just finding its footing. And these type of films were around. Films like Gladiator with... Cuba Gooden Jr. Or Only the Strong with Mark DeCoscos. Or Drive. These were the type of films that would have been lumped in with those types of films. Whereas those types of films were better. Karate Tigers, especially with Billy Blanks, was far superior than this crap. You know, but these are the types of films that would have been lumped in to them. There would have been like a Kung Fu marathon on and we would have seen these types of films. I mean, to this day, I see Bloodsport 4, but that's a whole another barrel of monkeys. I'm not going to jump into on sci-fi because that shit was awful. Bloodsport 4. I mean, it is what it is. But that's just a whole nother can of worms I don't feel like opening right now. I just didn't like that one. But anyway. So we get Alex Cardo again. Back in the same spot. But this time, he's out for vengeance because they killed Son. They kill Son. He goes to Son's brother's place in the Himalayas. I guess Son's brother's a Sherpa. Um, we go through a training montage after training montage, which some of these training montages were awesome. Like, for example, there's a scene where he's tied to two oxes. And he manages to break the ropes that are tied to these oxes with his sheer strength. There's this other scene where he has a King Cobra right in his face. And he mimics the Cobra's movements without getting attacked. Then we get this scene where he's blindfolded and he's dodging arrows and breaking them. They're literally shooting fucking arrows at this dude's face. He's dodging him and he's breaking him. I thought all of that shit was pretty awesome. You know, that's the type of 90s to 80s training montages that you want, that we get, that are very likable. Well then, finally, after all this training, Alex goes up to this Russian wannabe, I guess he's Russian, gangster's place, Snaps a guard's neck, steals his robes, and a la Mortal Kombat style. Shows up at the tournament, takes off the robe. Magically, we're supposed to believe he knew where this Kumite was. We're supposed to believe that these people knew who Alex was when he showed up at the Kumite. And they let him fight. You get bland fight. Bland fight, bland fight. You get Alex Cardo taking on Jolly Roger. Yeah, because there's literally a guy that looks like a fucking pirate in this damn film. They couldn't come up with nothing original. A fucking pirate in this damn film. Don't get me wrong. Jolly Roger, before he fought Cardo, had a pretty good fight with some dude. All bit... It was like a 5 or 10 second fight, but it was still a pretty good fight. But then we get Jolly Roger versus Cardo. Of course, you know what's going to happen because it's Daniel Bernhardt's movie. Cardo beats Jolly Roger. Um, there's this new antagonist called The Beast. He's just you know having these bland fights where he's whooping everybody's ass, showing how dominant and far superior he is. We're supposed to believe that he can whoop Alex Cardo. Um, he looks like Zangief from Street Fighter. The movie. I mean, if you've seen that clunker, then you know what I'm talking about. He looks like him. He goes from he goes through one guy after another after another. Then he gets up to fight this guy named Lim Lama. 
who's supposed to be like this cocky John, uh, Johnny Cage crossed with that black guy from Bloodsport type. Lim Lama gets a few shots in on the Beast. Uh, the uh, He's another Ray Jackson also. Gets a few shots in. Eventually, Beast just gets tired of toying with him. Snaps his back, snaps his neck, whoops his ass, and it's done. Then you get, finally, the final throwdown between the Beast and Alex Cardo. Again, the Beast's finishing move is side hand. You know, his supposedly rich hand. His rich hand is so strong, he hits you right in the chest and he'll cave in your chest. Just like we saw in Best of the Best. While Cardo's supposed to be, he knows Iron Palm, his legs are bamboo, and his arms are concrete. But he had to work it up again. I mean, I'm not even going to get into this fight. This fight, it was decently choreographed. But it's the same type of stuff we've seen before. Cardo goes up against the Beast. He tries to get a few shots in. He gets like one shot to the face. The Beast is tossing him around. Doing, you know, the guy's doing his job. He's just forgettable. He's tossing Cardo around. Drops him on his back. Tosses him around the ring. Cardo goes down. Cardo's pissed. They're counting down Cardo. He has these flashback montages. And then he becomes Rocky. And he whoops the beast's ass. It's pretty much that in a nutshell. And I'm not skimming through it. I'm just telling you the way it is. It's pretty much that in a nutshell. I mean, if this sounds interesting to you, you can find these blood sport movies on Amazon and eBay. If you go use very good three ninety nine, you go new, you're gonna pay like upwards to twenty dollars. But I don't know why you would pay twenty dollars for this garbage when you could pay three ninety nine and you want your grade B mindless actioneer type flick that you would find on USA Up All Night with Gilbert Godfrey or on TNT with Joe Bob Briggs. I mean, you can get it for three ninety nine. Use very good. But that's just my opinion on these movies. If I have to rate it, I give this a 4 out of 5 because the training montages are what gave it that rating. It's not very good, but it's not very forgettable either. The characters you will forget, but you don't watch these movies for its character development or because you care about what's going on. You watch these movies for the action. But then, then again, you might watch it because you want to see character development. I guess I'm just a different type of person. But this is my review. I'm the bad movie reviewer. I sit through shit so you don't have to. I'm me, you're you, I'm out.